I'm happy to be joined today by Dr. William Pau. He is the Ingram Associate Professor of Cancer Research, the Director of the Division of Hematology and Oncology, and the Director of Personalized Cancer Medicine at Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center. And he is also Associate Professor of Medicine, Cancer Bio Biology and Pathology, Microbiology and Immunology. Dr. Pau's talk is Optimizing Targeted Treatment of EGFR Mutant Lung Cancer. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Would you discuss some of your recent findings about the mechanisms of lung tumor sensitivity and resistance to EGFR inhibitors? Sure, so over the past uh, seven or eight years, we've come to a much greater understanding of why patients uh, initially respond to epidermal growth factor receptor tyrosine kinase inhibitors in lung cancer, and then now we found out why they uh, develop resistance. Um, to make a long story short, patients will have um, certain mutations in a gene called the epidermal growth factor receptor that makes their tumors highly sensitive to treatment but unfortunately, after about 10 to 16 months or so, uh, patients will start to have disease progression. Uh, so from rebiopsy analysis or analysis of tumor tissue from patients at that time, uh, we and others have shown that about half of patients will have another mutation that blocks the binding of the drug uh, in the right way. Uh, so then we've made mouse models uh, that basically mimic the human tumors, uh, and then we ran clinical trials in the mice uh, and came up with a combination of drugs uh, that we thought would be uh, highly eff um, efficacious in eliminating tumors driven by the most common mechanism, which is a second site mutation uh, that changes threonine to methionine at position 790. Uh, so we convinced the drug company to do the trial uh, based on our results in the mice, uh, and I'm happy to say that we reported at ASCO this year that 40% of patients are having their tumor shrink on this combination. Um, so we're very happy with that, but we need to do more uh, in addition uh, because patients are also developing acquired resistance to that combination. What has your research shown about how we can optimize targeted treatments for EGFR mutant lung cancer? Yeah, so in separate studies, what we've also done is modeled uh, cell line, we've modeled acquired resistance in vitro uh, using cell lines. Uh, and we were able to show that uh, paradoxically, actually, after you acquire the second mutation, your cells don't necessarily grow faster uh, than the parental cells. We then used uh, sp specific growth and death characteristics of those cells, and then together with Francesca Mishore's group, uh, she's a math mathematical modeler, we were able to then figure out using mathematical modeling and evolutionary cancer modeling uh, the best ways of administering uh, drugs like uh, gefitinib and erlotinib. Just as an aside, these drugs were developed against the wild-type receptor um, before the mutant receptors were actually ever identified. And so we believe that our modeling has shown a better way to uh, administer these drugs. Uh, and based on that data, we've actually proposed two clinical trials, um, one to uh, delay the emergence of t 790 media resistance, and the second uh, to preventually uh, overcome uh, and treat uh, patients who already have t 790 media resistance. Thank you. And on a different subject now, you're also a Stand Up to Cancer Innovative Research Grant recipient. Would you tell us a little bit about your project, which is called Identifying Solid Tumor Kinase Fusions via Exxon Capture and 454 Sequencing? Sure. So uh, what's become evident over the past uh, decade, again, is that uh, tumors will often have uh, aberrant uh, fusions or rearrangements that involve kinases. Kinases are signaling proteins that we now know are very targetable with specific small molecules. The best example of that is like BCR able in chronic myelogenous leukemia, and more recently, the ALK fusions or ALK rearrangements found in lung cancer. Uh, so we built a platform to basically uh, systematically interrogate tumor samples for kinase fusions, uh, potentially unknown kinase fusions. Uh, so we've built uh, two versions of that method. We've shown that it works. We've actually identified a novel PDGFR beta fusion in a patient with a type of leukemia. Uh, we recently reported that and we now have a number of samples undergoing screening. Uh, in addition, in collaboration with a group in Fudan University in Shanghai, we've been looking at what we call pan-negative lung uh, cancers. So these are lung cancers that do not have any known driver mutations uh, that we already know about, such as EGFR mutations, KRAS mutations, ALK fusions, et cetera. Uh, so through that whole exome sequencing project, we've actually identified multiple novel candidates, and we're now in the process of characterizing those and seeing if they have potential th uh, therapeutic relevance in the clinic. Yeah, and would you talk a little bit more about your thoughts on being able to translate the stand-up to cancer work to the clinic? Yeah, so the targets that we're going after are obviously ones that we hope that we'll be able to target with small molecules or potentially with antibodies. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be able to uh, make progress in that front. Um, we're, we're looking specifically for druggable targets. It's really exciting work. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Powell. Thank you.